And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. And yes, BlackRock boss Larry Fink praises Bitcoin for digitizing gold. You never thought you'd hear it out of the horse's mouth, especially since a couple of years ago. I think he was poo-pooing the whole idea of Bitcoin, but needless to say, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin, the dollar, NASDAQ. We're going to take a look at some of the altcoins, the underlying market dynamics, and some of the economic data coming out. Today, uh, we, we had, what do we have? ADP, unemployment change. So bullish for the dollar, so hotter than expected. And uh, what else came out? Bullish for the dollar, jobless claims continuing to uh, come in lower than expected. Not good for PAL. In 25 minutes, we get the S&P Global Services PMI. That'll be the last notch on the belt. But following up on the dollar, the picture is becoming a bit more clear in my eyes. But uh, that's why I think it's really kind of important to understand where we are at in the context of the marketplace, right? So Bitcoin is, or sorry, Dixie is in a bit of a sideways range here. Um, compared to an uptrend or just a straight downtrend. And uh, we did call off the lows, uh, several drives of hidden bullish divergence. That's where the price was making uh, lower lows and the RSI was making significantly higher lows. Needless to say, um, called the rally to the top side of the range, got kicked back to the 618. And now we are kind of uh, breaking the short term downtrend to the upside. Still kind of giving us the bias that we're going to head up to this green box. As long as we are low, um, below there, pressure is on the downside. And as soon as we break this box to the downside, coming in at 102.28, uh, I'd be looking for a quick move back to the bottom side of the range. Ultimately, though, um, I do believe that uh, we're coming in alignment with a massive trend line here. And so price is likely going to glide its way onwards and towards this trend line. And then it's going to be the break of this, you know, call it a massive head and shoulders, call it a descending triangle. Um, if it's a head and shoulders or a double shoulder psh, head and then a double shoulder, right? As long as you don't get back above the the opposing shoulder, call it the right shoulder there, then, uh, you know, pretty much a valid measure move. And that's going to take us way, way down for the dollar, which would be absolutely bullish for, you know, risk assets as long as that trend holds true. And that would be way, way down to the bottom side of the range. And I, um, you know, uh, you know, just just giving you my ideas and thoughts here on the market. Now, the inverse of that which I would actually think would be more likely to happen unless they start printing money, uh, would be a, a rally up to 120. And uh, that would be, you know, if the dollar wants to get bullish and, you know, start closing back above this area. And, you know, the reason why Dixie hat, it, you know, is the strongest currency in the world, right? We got 10,000 nukes back in it. And apparently people are de-dollarizing. That's the latest, hottest uh, trend line topic. But uh, the dollar does give us some impetus or some bias for direction. Doesn't always hold true, but when the dollar goes up, risk assets tend to go down. Vice versa, dollar goes down, risk assets tend to go up. As we've seen, stock market take quite a bit of a rally. Checking in on NASDAQ. Still putting in this little double top we've been talking about here. Uh, potential 786 reversal and we'll be keeping an eye on that first warning sign is the gap fill and any kind of a closure back below this pivot here at uh, 1450 uh, probably does initiate a little bit more downside maybe come test retest the highs over here that's it for short term. So as the dollar is rallying off some of the bullish news, uh, what do we have coming in tomorrow and next week? I, I really didn't catch what he said at the FOMC meeting, but apparently the market doesn't care and uh, people are just in rally mode. They're in ec you know, tech, AI, you know, booming market mode. And uh, Bitcoin is you know, seeing the benefit of that, at least in the short term. I'll get into Bitcoin price action in just a section. <laughs> just a second. 
Uh, <clears throat> so finishing it up on Dixie, the, um, you know, m more sideways and up uh, is, you know, probably going to be okay for markets as the market, as we've been consolidating in this range, you'd seen, uh, you know, risk assets really have a chance to rally. So that's just something to be aware of. Any other major economic dates? Not that I'm aware of. I will check into it over the next couple of days. Um, tomorrow, more uh, non-farm payrolls, hourly earnings. It really seems like the market isn't paying attention to economic data. So, all right, let's get into Bitcoin price action. And uh, we were working on this four-hour range, which we are still caught in the, you know, in the range right now. And again, if you want to learn more about where we're at in the market um, when it comes to structure, I made this video actually. I'll put a link in the description below. Here's what an uptrend is. Here's what a downtrend is. And here is what a sideways market consolidation. Feel free to watch the video below and, you know, get a little more educated. It's 10 minutes. Or you can join Crypt Courses, uh, Bitcoin 101, How to Grow Your Crypto Wealth. Just click start here. There is going to be a link in the description below as well. And, uh, you know, take 15 minutes a day and learn a little bit and uh, grow your crypto wealth. Um, let's see. What else did I want to bring up? All right. So four hour range gets resolved to the upside. You can see a ascending triangle forming here in these typically break when they are 75% full. Um, We're not quite there. Where would that line us up with? Somewhere tomorrow, probably uh, the July 23rd. Is that? No, that's that's Monday the 10th. So this could drag on a bit longer as volatility is resetting. And um, yeah, essentially, you want to see that green 55 get held up. The more taps, the weaker it's going to get. But vice versa, as we are punching a sheet of glass to the top side at about 31,300, the more times we tap the upside there, the more likely it is going to break to the upside. And that lines you up right with that 32.5 target. And then to the downside is about 29,000. And I would not be surprised for you know price action to do a little bit of both. Run it up there, run it back down there and get all the liquidity out of the market. Speaking of that, uh, open interest is taking up slightly here at 9.4 billion. Is that correct? 9.4 billion there. Funding rates are positive, so you're paying to go long and the leverage ratio is ticking down. Fear and greed index still uh, relatively uh, neutral, but slightly greedy there. And um, that's it. So nothing too heavy coming in tomorrow. Next week, I'm just going to do a quick perusal to see if there's any major economic data as we are in the beginning of summer. It's July 6th. Uh, well, it's halfway through summer if you, if you don't count September as summer where you're at. And I just want to see rate hike wise when so inflation numbers come out wednesday next week that'll probably be a big one and then ppi and consumer sentiment so you know some some economic news coming out next week i think uh we'll just take it level by level at this point waiting for the four hour range to break and again i do expect some selling pressure up here buying pressure up down here and uh with that said, I will get back to you guys with some more updates this week. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day, and we will see you very soon. Take care.